In a previous video, I went over Code Server, a Docker container that allows you to write code in a VS Code environment through a web browser, allowing one to easily develop on remote servers. Today, I'm going to expand this idea with another Docker container that I will call Docker VNC Desktop. With these two containers, along with some add-ons, I'm able to work fully on any remote server. On my previous video on Code Server, I mentioned how one drawback is that Code Server does not support graphical outputs or additional windows, meaning viewing plots, images, or anything else graphical in nature would not be possible. Due to the fact that data science and machine learning often deals with images or videos, this is a big negative. If I were to run this command here, plot test, we see that it prints out both before and after, but fails to plot a uh, simple plot here. Thankfully, as I have already hinted, there is a solution for this issue using another Docker container. Specifically, I am talking about the Docker container on this Docker Hub page. There is a lot to this Docker container, but the shore of it is that it is a Ubuntu 16.04 or CentOS Linux environment that has a full desktop environment that one can access through several VNC options. Those VNC options include a normal VNC connection, which can be accessed through almost any VNC client, as well as a no VNC option, allowing one to access the desktop environment through a web browser. In addition, like a normal Docker container, we were able to build on top of the container, allowing us to easily build a development-friendly environment that can quickly be deployed and accessed anywhere. For example, I added additional tools to this image, including Anaconda, to allow me to easily develop machine learning software remotely. By using this Docker environment, I gain the ability to easily view my data, as well as other niceties of a desktop environment. I will now demo how it works and how one could use this Docker image to help them win their work. As I previously showed, if I were to try running this code here, the matplot code would not plot the plot. And it fails. This is due to limitations in code server. If we use the new Docker image, this is no longer an issue. I will now launch the custom Docker container that I will go over more in detail later to show how it addresses the issue and how it is built. Here we have a script called run image. As we can see, I forward both ports 5901 and 6901. 5901 being for the VNC connection and 6901 being for the no VNC connection. I also pass a single GPU into the container using NVIDIA Docker. In addition, I also mount a drive so that I can access my code inside the container. I will now run the script. The script is now running, meaning the Docker container has started. We can now access the container. If we are not on the local machine the container is running, we will need to use SSH port forwarding to access these ports from the remote PC to our local PC using a command like the following. What this command does is that it connects to your remote computer like normal using SSH. But in addition, using the dash L command, it allows port forwarding to be done. What this means is in that in this example, it's forwarding port 8080 and putting it on your local host port 8080. This additional dash P2222 allows one to designate a different port to use through SSH if the default is not 22. Now that we have the ports on our local machine, we can now connect to the container using either port 5901 using a VNC client or 6901 using any major web browser. I'll now demonstrate both options. First, we'll do the option through uh, no VNC. Reading the documentation on Docker Hub, 
the default password is VNC P A S S W O R D. VNC password. And here we have access to the container through a web browser. Additionally, we can access the container through a VNC client. Here I'm using real VNC. And it is opened up. And so we can see that on both screens uh, we are connected to the same container. I will now navigate to the directory that I mounted when I started the Docker container. The drive that I mounted has access to both this container as well as the code server container, meaning that the code that we write in code server is accessible in this container. What this means is that if I activate my Kana environment and run the code that we ran previously, we now get a plot, which is the expected behavior of matplotlib. What this means is that the issue of not being able to see graphical windows and applications from Python and other languages has been solved, greatly expanding our ability to work remotely. If we close this plot, go back to our code server code, and let's make it uh, 15 now, save it, and go back to the other tab in our browser and run it again, we see that the results have changed. So I'm just showing that I am, in fact, write, uh, writing and running my code in two different tabs and a browser. Additionally, I'll show that we have GPU access inside this container. I'll import torch, and I'll run torch.cuda.is is available. True. So that shows that we have access to the GPU inside this container. I will now go over the custom Docker image that I made for the purposes of machine learning development in Python. First, we see that I'm using the container from the Docker Hub page I showed earlier. I set environment variables to allow the installation of Anaconda for later in the image, as well as so GPU can be used inside the container. Next, I update Ubuntu and install a few packages I may need for later. Then I run wget to download Anaconda and run the installation. I then set the appropriate environment variables to the path so that I can easily use Anaconda after the installation. Lastly, I create a simple environment called Torch, where I installed PyTorch libraries as well as matplotlib. At this point, we have seen that this Docker VNC desktop container is a great tool. By using both Code Server and this Docker VNC container, one can set up remote desktop environments for themselves, or set up multiple environments for a team that shares a powerful server. I use both these Docker containers almost daily, and I hope this this will be helpful to others. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. Uh, leave a comment for any questions you may have or anything else that you may like to see. Uh, thanks again. Uh, have a good day.